By now, you've probably noticed the vehicle insurance premiums have gone up in Alberta. Is it because insurance companies are not able to make a profit because of higher claims being made? Or is it simply a push to increase their profit margins? Joining me now to talk about it is Mark Fian, spokesperson for Fair Alberta, Fair Alberta Injury Regulations, and former president of the Alberta Civil Trial Lawyers Association. Mark, welcome to Bridge City News. Well, thanks very much for having me. Mark, what is FAIR Alberta all about and what are you trying to accomplish here? So FAIR is an acronym, F-A-I-R. We have a website. I want to get that out right away so I don't forget. FAIRAB.ca. So FAIR Alberta Injury Regulations. And what it is, and we were talking a little bit before the camera came on, uh, about some of the things that insurance uh, companies are doing to people in Alberta, allegedly because they say they are losing money. And the group that I am with and I'm a spokesperson for uh, is looking at this and we represent um, a pretty significant cross section of various uh, components of Al the Alberta community. We have uh, medical professionals, doctors, chiropractors, physiotherapists. We, we have in our group uh, legal professionals. We have uh, injury victims. We have consumers. And we are wondering also what is going on. There's quite a bit of history to the whole insurance scheme in Alberta. Um, and there's a new government in place. And that is who our message really is for. Yeah, the Alberta government scrapped a 5% insurance rate cap that was put in place by the NDP. Why was that? So, okay, so if you go back 15 years to 2003, 2002, uh, the insurance industry deliberately, now, and we know this, we can prove this, they deliberately rate shocked Alberta. They were handing a 17, 18 year old kids bills for to drive a car for a year of seven, eight, nine thousand dollars So if kids, wow. of course, can't afford that. They would go to their parents. They would go, what's going on? Uh, and they would call up their MLA and the MLAs were, oh my God, we got to do something. So Ralph Klein and his uh, group at that time, they, they, they stepped in. They said, we're going to regulate this. So we're going to limit how much um, insurance companies can charge for liability. And we're going to uh, put a cap on minor injuries. And so for the last 15 years in Alberta, there's a, there has been this scheme in place. It took a few years for things to sort out, but over about the last 10 years now, we think the system is pretty stable. Um, and just in the last, really in the last year, since the new government came in, the insurance industry is back to rate shocking. I think that they're looking at what worked 15 years ago. They want to make some more money. They want to get the government to limit even further what they have to pay for. They want to include chronic pain in the definition of minor injury. And I have seen chronic pain cases last an entire lifetime. They, they, those those in, chronic pain injuries can, can plague somebody for their entire life. That is not a minor injury. And the, but the insurance industry, and even Premier Kenny is talking about how lawyers, and I'm one of those, this is my business, this is what I do, have found loopholes in the, 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 in the legislation to get around the cap. But, but chronic pain, right from the very beginning, the Court of Appeal of Alberta said that is a more serious injury than the chronic pain, um, than the minor injury regulations uh, contemplate. So this is not something that lawyers have gotten around. What they're saying is we want to include a non-capped, a major injury into the minor injury definition. You know, some say that personal injury awards have been on the rise. That's why we're seeing a lot of these rates increasing. Any stats to actually support that? Um, I do have some paper here and that, that absolutely is not true. Uh, th there is not a lot of information. This is one of the big issues that we're talking about. A lot of the information, uh, all of the information that we have available to us as the general public, and that's where we are, um, we go to uh, the federal regulations, we go to the provincial regulations. This one here says that so far this year, uh, just by way of example, one insurance company, AMA, everybody knows who AMA is, they have made in the first half of this year, Bef profit before taxes of over $32 million. Wow. No, so, right. So, so how are they losing money? We have said to the insurance industry, 
if you're saying you're you're losing money, open your books. Let us have a look at your books. And they have just ignored us. They have not opened the books. They're they're handing this line to the government. Now, you don't get any smarter because you get elected to office. You you come into it the person you are and you now have a duty as a representative of the people to, to look into these um, um, issues, to become informed and to make a responsible decision. Um, we have gone to the government, the insurance companies are going to the government, and we're very concerned that the government is not paying attention to their responsibilities. They're listening to the insurance companies saying, we're losing money. And we want to make sure that they also hear the other side of the coin, that we say they are making lots of money and that we don't want injury claims to be uh, minimized further. So, Mark, what's the current cap on soft tissue injuries right now? Um, I think right now it's about $5,300. Apparently, some people are finding ways to get around that somehow. Can you explain? Well, what the insurance industry means by that when they say yes, and they've been saying that, what they say is, um, well, we think that there should be non-capped uh, claims in that. So if you get more for a non-capped claim, then you're s somehow circumventing the, the minor injury regulations. Well, you, you <laughs> if you have a brain injury and you get more money than five thousand dollars, you didn't get around the cap. You were compensated for a non-minor injury. That's so. How do yeah. we compare it to other provinces? Um, in terms of premiums that we pay, we are just a little bit less than ha average. Now, I don't know with these new statistics what's going to happen. Um, the The cost of the system to to the province is uh, about right about in the middle. Is is about where we're neither higher nor lower. British Columbia is outrageous. I think that on average, um, um, a person driving a car here pays around twelve or thirteen hundred at a thousand dollars if you live in BC. Wait a minute, that's the government control, like Saskatchewan. So maybe public auto insurance isn't the best way to go. Well, it depends on what you want. Does Alberta want to live in a system where you have no rights to sue? And you're, you're, you're basically, you get an injury, you look it up on a meat chart, and that's the amount of money you get. That's not very applicable for, for everybody. It might fit the sort of the general uh, central category, but it doesn't fit. And, and you, you know, that's not the issue these days, whether we should have a, a no fault or government insurance. What, what, FAIR is about is trying to make sure that our government representatives, our government officials, including the Premier and the Minister of Finance and Treasury, are make a responsible decision about the claims that are being made by the insurance industry and making sure that they check into the facts. Okay, so there's a couple things that are... I, I'm not sure if you're getting this down there, but there's a, there are a couple of spokespersons for the Insurance Bureau of Canada, IBC, and they've been saying that for every dollar of premium, um, for every premium dollar collected, they're paying out a dollar twelve. If you look at that statement, every premium dollar collected, well, that's not all the money that insurance companies bring in. They, when, the, when they collect premiums, they don't pay it out for five or six or eight or 10 years. In the meantime, they invest it. And these are high power investments that we're talking about. You don't just get three or 4% when, when you're an insurance company, right? You can go to the high power preferred in investments and you can get over 10%. So if you're bringing in a, a 10% more, and you don't include that in that statement that we're losing 12 cents, how is that fair? That's a deceptive thing to say. Now, we're, we're looking at that kind of stuff, and we're going, well, we hope the government's not listening to this because it's clearly at least misinformation, if not out and out deception. And, and they have been caught. The insurance industry, or I can't remember which insurance company it was, but about a year ago, uh, this particular company went to the Alberta Insurance Rate Board, and they are the ones that receive insurance requests for increases, 
and they allow it or don't allow it or say, okay, you can get 2% or 4% or whatever. And that's the cap that was, was on in place and that was lifted by the, um, the UCP about two months ago. Mark, how common is insurance fraud today? In particular, people who may fake or exaggerate an injury to receive big compensation. Yeah, you know what? There's a lot of issues that we could talk about. I personally have been doing this for almost 40 years, and I can count on one hand the number of true, and and I mean less than five times in 40 years, the number of true times that I think there was a fraud. Wow. It's it's extremely remote. I somebody else with other information might say something different. I, I think that that is just something that they're using to, oh, well, we got to stop paying these frauds. So somebody gets into a car accident and says they got a sore neck, you can call them a fraud. Does that make them a fraud? We have a court system to, to, to verify whether people are actually injured. We have doctors, we have insurance lawyers and investigators and, and adjusters. They are looking very carefully. They're very alive to this issue. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about, if I can just go back to that um, claim about a, a year ago where they were asking for uh, an increase in the premium. So they have to go to the AIRB, Alberta Insurance Rate Board, and they have to prove that they're in, they need more money. So they bring this information. The government's own auditor looked at the data that that insurance company provided and said, and this is a, this is a public statement, that does not that is not reliable information and we what do you mean said well they're saying that they're pay, on average they're paying out too much money per claim but they didn't include all the claims they only took the high end claims they didn't include the low end claims so that skews the, the average it skews the numbers and it, it was in largely in res response to that incident that happened about a year ago that the the, the ndp decided they don't think that they didn't think they could believe the insurance industry. They hired an actuary out of Ontario and he, for about a, almost a year now, has been working on a report which is due out in the next month and he is going to tell us whether the insurance industry is a profitable business or not. And I think that that's what's going on right now. They're trying to, to, to get ahead of that before the, the government finds out what the truth is. Mark, you know, I've noticed with my own insurance company, when it comes to auto insurance, it's gone up about 30% in the last year or so. I've got a clean record, no accidents. One of my coworkers, who's quite a bit younger than I am, hers has gone up about 120%. What do you think is a fair profit margin for these insurance companies? Well, that's a really good question. And I don't know. And um, this is the problem that the provincial government of Alberta got itself into 15 years ago because they are responsible for for telling a, an industry how much a fair profit is well the industry wants more they're like the bears in the national park you give them something it's not enough ever they want more give us more give us more so we don't also do not want the industry to collapse and fail because it's a valuable important part of alberta society we need insurance so that's the question. But that is the the decision that a responsible government has to make. We ought to make sure that they're not raking in more money than they should be, and we don't want them to go broke either. But how are you going to know unless they open their books and show us how much money they're making? And they have refused to do that so far. You know, it's interesting. I was talking to one of our government officials here, provincial government officials, and that person was talking to our local police force here in Lethbridge, saying that the amount of young people driving without insurance now is through the roof because they simply can't afford it. What they do is they get their pink card, then they refuse to pay. Yeah, I've, I've been hearing about that as well. And I've also heard the government, of course, there's always, for the, for the innocent victim, there's, there's a, res, a, a, a fallback position. There's a, a, the Motor Vehicle Accident Claims Fund, which is managed by the province of Alberta, and they will pay up to $200,000 for somebody injured by an uninsured driver. Plus, they can have their own insurance kick in up to whatever their limits are. So for the injured person, that's not a bad thing. Um, but but yes, I mean, there's always going to be issues with fraud and people driving without insurance. But again, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about misinformation being given by the insurance industry really as a whole and shocking people with high rates so that they 
cause people to go to the government and say, what's going, like you were talking about your, um, your, your friend there um, whose insurance went up 120%. I'm sure she's mad about that, and she ought to be. You know, it wouldn't be a surprise to me if she phoned up her MLA and said, well, you got to do something. So if that's all the MLAs are hearing, they're going to think, we got a problem here. Insurance companies are charging too much money. Hopefully, though, they will say, let's just stop for a second, and let's look at this. Let's get their books. Let's look and see how much they're making. Let's find out if this is a legitimate thing that's going on or if it's just – manufactured a manufactured crisis yeah transparency is what it's all about definitely mark fian spokesperson for fair alberta fair alberta injury regulations thanks for joining me today from edmonton thank you very much for having me